Welcome to the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast. I'm Tori Mystic, here with my dogs, Lucy and Bert. Together, we're interviewing cool, creative women entrepreneurs in the pet industry. Do you dream of working alongside your dog? Then sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode to find the inspiration and resources that will help you grow your own dog-inspired business. When you think about working with dogs, probably one of the first careers you think of is dog training. Yet, I haven't really covered that topic very much on this show. That's why I am so excited to share with you this interview with a woman who has spent the last 15 years helping dog trainers create successful businesses. There's way more to it than learning basic commands. You also need to know how to run and market a small business. No matter what you do in the pet industry, I know you'll get a lot from this episode. Veronica Bautel is the author of several books, including How to Run a Dog Business, Putting Your Career Where Your Heart Is. Through her business, Dog Biz, she and her team help dog trainers start, grow, and run thriving businesses through one-on-one consulting, Dog Biz University courses, and a suite of dog business products. Veronica writes regular business columns for multiple industry journals and is a sought-after speaker at dog training schools and conferences across the country and internationally. Hey, Veronica. Hey, Tori. It's so great to be here with you. I'm so happy to have you on the show and and learn about everything that you do. I mean, just the name of your business, Dog Biz, of course, I was like, I have to have this woman on my podcast. (laughs) (laughs) It is, it, you know, the, the funny thing is um, some, some of your listeners out there may actually know us originally as, as Dog Tech, um, which was okay. our original name. Um, but, uh, but yeah, after a number of years of people thinking that we were, you know, veterinarians and, and uh, software developers and whatnot, we thought, you know, Dog Biz really does kind of say what we do. Yeah, I love it. It's, it. You know, sometimes it pays to just be very straightforward and clear. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So I love the niche that you have found, which is helping dog trainers grow their business. Um, Because I've seen a lot of people and there's even other podcasts about pet sitting. Um, And then I talk to people in every facet of the pet industry, but you specialize in helping dog trainers build a successful business. So how, how did you get started in that? How did you transition? I'm assuming you were a trainer first, and then you decided to teach what you knew to others, but how did this kind of come about? Yeah, so I was... I had had my own dog training business um, at the time that this came up. I was director of behavior and training for the San Francisco SPCA. And at that time, Jean Donaldson's Academy for Dog Trainers was part of that department. And, you know, it was a world-renowned school. We had um, people on, you know, multi-year wait lists um, from all over the world coming to attend this program. I was a graduate myself. And every year we would graduate out four cadres of amazing dog trainers. And then when we would follow up with them, we would find that they had gone back to the unsatisfying careers they were trying to escape, or they had taken on part-time jobs, and, you know, and, and we were trying to figure out what, what was going on, because they, they were great at dog training, um, you know, they had the people skills necessary, because of course that's a huge part of the job as well, and what we realized is they didn't know how to run businesses. And so, you know, I kept it just, for, you know, for the years I was, I was director, I kept thinking, we've got to do something about this. We've got to do something about this. And so I finally decided to go and do something about it. So we, we, launched, um, we launched the business in 2003 with the sole purpose of figuring out how we could keep dog trainers. Um, and, and we do work with that. You know, we work with dog walkers a lot too and, you know, daycares and things like that. But, but yeah, you know, our, our sort of primary mission is, dog trainers and how do we keep people in their businesses so a they can make a living doing what they love and b they can touch that many more dogs lives so that that was sort of the 
the impetus to, to get going. That's just wonderful. I think that, um, you know, I hear from a lot of people and I've experienced this myself. Sometimes when you do something that you love doing so much that you get so much joy out of, you feel guilty charging people for it (laughs) or making money doing it. And you kind of have to shift your mindset to, you know, rethink that like what you're providing is really valuable and it's worth being paid so that you can keep doing it and keep sharing what you're good at. Yeah, it's really true. And it's, and it's one of the things that um, we find that all dog professionals, but especially dog trainers really struggle with is pricing themselves professionally to keep themselves in it. And I, and I think, yeah, there is that, there is that tremendous guilt factor. And I think part of it too, is that I think that the people who are drawn to this work tend to be much more altruistically minded than entrepreneurially minded. And so, you know, we do it because we're passionate about helping dogs. And so there's that guilt factor of getting paid for it. Um, And I think also, you know, for us, we know that uh, we know that the vast majority of dog trainers out there would probably have jobs if there were jobs to be had. So, you know, dog trainers generally aren't people who grew up always thinking, Oh, I want to have a business someday. I want to own my own business. Ooh, maybe I'll go into dog training. It's always been, that these are people who decided after previous careers that they were going to go and give themselves the gift of working with dogs for a living and then realized, oh, well, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to have to start a business. And so that part, I think, gets done with a lot of reluctance, um, you know, for, for the vast majority of people out there trying to improve the lives of dogs and the people who love them. Right. And almost as an afterthought, you, you know, pursue it first and then you're like, oh, how, how about you (laughs) Right, right. And, and, and they're passionate, you know, we're passionate about dogs and dog behavior. So getting up on a steep learning curve on that is, you know, no one has to talk you into doing that. But if you're going to learn how to run a business, you've got to, you know, you've, you've got to put the same kind of commitment into learning that skill set. And it's, it's harder because it's not something that we tend to come into it with passion about. I never meant, you know, I, I didn't grow up planning to be a business owner and an entrepreneur. Right. That, that was never how I saw myself. Um, I mean, I quit the Girl Scouts because I was so uncomfortable <laughs> selling cookies. You know, I just, <laughs> wasn't, this wasn't something that, but, but the good news is that it's a skill set you can learn. And, and um, you know, even if it doesn't feel natural to you. Yeah. And I, as I'm talking to you, I'm just looking at the, the bio that I read at the beginning of the episode and um, your book, the subtitle is putting your career where your heart is. And I just think that like speaks to so many people in the pet industry. So how, how did you choose that subtitle? Yeah, you know, because it's interesting. These days, the last few years, we're starting to see more people come into dog training as a first career, but it's just starting to happen. Up to this point, and you talk to, you know, virtually any dog trainer, and they've had at least one previous career, if not several, right? Mm-hmm. And because, and it's not that they didn't always love dogs. It's not that we wouldn't always have liked to have made our living working with dogs. It's just that that never seemed like a viable option, right? And <laughs> we don't grow up with, you know, hey, do you want to be a doctor, or a nurse, or a lawyer, or a construction worker, or a dog trainer? I mean, it just it's it's not it's not out there, you know, generally as an option. It seemed it seems kind of crazy and kind of frivolous. And but at some point. At some point, there are a subset of dog lovers who finally say to themselves, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do what I love for a living. And I am so inspired by that. I mean, that's something I just think, you know, we, the, the, the clients that we work with, the trainers that we come into contact with through the speaking that we do and the consulting that we do and, and the teaching that we do, most of them this was a really, this is a scary thing to be doing, right? And I mean, it just, it just, to, 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 to follow your passion instead of to follow some practical path that seems like a logical, safe one. It's a little crazy and dicey to throw it all up in the air and say, I'm going to go work with dogs for a living. And we're starting to see a cultural shift in that, that maybe it's, you know, oh gosh, there's an actual industry here and you can have a viable career. 
but most of the time what people hear is oh you're never going to be able to make a living doing that and so here you have all of these people who are passionate enough to actually put their careers where their heart is and then we wanted to speak to that to say you know you're not alone in that you're not totally crazy to do that and oh by the way you actually can make a completely viable living doing that you just you got you, you got to get in there and learn how to do it and and you know trust that it can be done but i i am just so inspired every day I mean, our like you know the big picture thing of course is we hope that we're helping to have an impact on more dogs lives but what really drives us every day is the joy of getting to do what we love for a living. And a huge part of that is the joy of sharing that with other people, of actually helping people do, you know, to put their career where their heart is. Yeah, I think it's so inspiring. And I think that no matter what area in the pet industry that you're in, you're making a difference in pets' lives, which yeah. makes people's lives better, which just makes the whole world better. So um, pursuing pursuing this is not um, frivolous by any means. So, so I'm wondering, as a dog mom myself, <laughs> who has <laughs> been training dogs for over half my life, my own dogs, how feasible is it for a regular dog mom like me to make a career shift? Not that I want to do that because I, I spend all day with my dogs anyhow, but for, <laughs> for people who are listening or, or maybe, you know, finding that they kind of have a knack for it, how feasible is it for them to pursue a career as a professional dog trainer? It's actually really quite feasible and you're needed out there. Um, you know, it's interesting. One of the things that's very funny um, to us is that, so <laughs> it's not uncommon when we're speaking at conferences and seminars and things like that. It, it's funny because you, you still hear a lot of this that, oh, you can't make a living as a dog trainer. And it always makes me laugh because I make my living helping people make a living <laughs> as a dog trainer. And so like, oh, no, no, this is actually really quite possible. And over the 15 years that we've been doing this, we've worked with people from, you know, <laughs> we've seen people leave careers, everything from, uh, you know, retail work and barista work to uh, high-powered, you know, law firm work. Um, we've seen people leave the medical profession, leave the, mar you know, the, the uh, professional marketing. I, I can't, I honestly cannot think of a job or a career that we haven't seen people make a successful transition from to dog training. So it is completely feasible. And I will just say that if this is something that you've been thinking about, if this is something, you know, that, uh, you know, speaking, you know, to, to your listeners that you've been thinking about, that you've been fantasizing about, dreaming about, don't let anyone, not friends, not family, you know, it, don't let anybody tell you it's not possible. I can tell you, we've been doing this for 15 years. It's completely possible. <laughs> and from wherever you're listening, whether it's a, you know, a, a dense urban population or, you know, you're out in suburbia or you're listening from another country, I mean, it just, you can do this and it, it will look different for you than it looks, you know, for the next person, but, but it's, it's completely viable. I mean, this is a real career choice and it is a uh, I love wonderful it. one. Yeah. I think it sounds wonderful. We have a fabulous dog trainer that we work with who I just think the world of. So, um, I think it's a great career to pursue. Um, so, okay. I'm wondering now if someone, so they've made the decision to go after this, they have maybe gotten some kind of certification and they're ready to hit the road and start working as a dog trainer. What do you think are the keys to success, you know, or what would be like your number one or two pieces of advice to give someone who's trying to build this business for themselves? Okay. So you said that they've gone and gotten a certification, which is awesome. I just want to reiterate that though. This is an unregulated industry, which means that technically you can wake up this morning, decide you're a dog trainer and call yourself one, even if you've never pursued any education in it. That's going to change someday, but I don't think it's going to change tomorrow. Um, and so just from a really ethical perspective, please go seek education because this is one of those industries where it's really easy to assume that because we've grown up with dogs, we've lived with them all our lives, that we know what we need to know. But as you know, working with a dog trainer, you've probably lived with dogs all your life and you're probably amazed all the time by what you're learning from your trainer. I learn things. We go on a regular basis still to this day and I learn things all the time. Yeah. And there is an awful lot of science to learn about dog cognition and learning and then there's all of the skill set to learn about training and so and and I'll tell you the best trainers are trainers who 
you know, one hallmark of being a professional in any industry is a commitment to ongoing professional education and development. And the best trainers I know, these are trainers who've been at it for 20, 30 years. They are still actively taking courses and pursuing new certifications because it, there's a lot more to it than you would think. And so, so do go, you know, do, you know, pr pursue that education and certification aspect. When you've got that then and you're ready, okay, I want to go, you know, I want to go make my, my living at this. The biggest piece of advice I can give is now throw yourself into learning about how to, how to, how to start and run a business. Um, there are so many pieces to this that, you know, you mentioned one of them, which is that if you, if, if you, if you don't set your rates, and at a level where you can actually make a living, then no matter how great a dog trainer you are, you're not going to make a living at it. And so you know, learning things like, how do you go about setting your rates? How do you go about marketing yourself? Um, you know, letting people know that you're there. How, you know, if, if you're in an area where there are already, a lot of times people say, well, I don't think it's going to work because there are already all these trainers in the area. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, the reality is the vast majority of trainers don't market themselves or they don't do it well which means there's always rented in there and carve out space for yourself in the market if you're willing to learn how to do that and it's nowhere near as hard as people think it is you just have to learn have to learn how it works so give yourself the gift of becoming a trainer but then give yourself the gift of also you know, truly becoming a business owner not just starting a business but learning how learning how to run it it's just not as scary as you think it will be. Once you get in there, it, it's it's not, and it, and it actually can be really exciting. I mean, that that's the thing that's cool. When we started 15 years ago, we honestly weren't really sure. Like, if you take someone who's afraid of business, who's really uncomfortable selling themselves, um, you know, all of that. Like, can you can you learn a skill set that allows you to do that with confidence? And we thankfully the answer has been yes. We've also spent 15 years really creatively thinking about ways to help trainers market their businesses that don't ask them to step outside their comfort zones <laughs> because you know like I said I'm not joking when I said I quit the Girl Scouts because I did not want to have to sell the cookies I mean I just that was really uncomfortable for me there are lots of different ways to get out there and promote yourself that are not smarmy and icky and uncomfortable so that's that's my biggest piece of advice is set the fear down and go learn what it actually means to run a successful dog training business because you probably you could probably do it sorry to interrupt the interview but i want to tell you about an online summit happening this july designed just for petpreneurs like us the Empowered Petpreneur is an interview series that will teach you how to feel at ease while confidently running and growing a successful pet business. There's about 20 experts on board, including me, and it's all being led by Michaela Samuels of Pet Marketing Unleashed. You'll get our expert advice on all the business topics you need to know about, from social media and branding to Facebook ads and blogging, plus a ton more. The best part of this series is that it is totally free. That's right, F-R-E-E. -E. <laughs> to get access, just go to bit.ly slash EP all access and Michaela will make sure you're all set to go. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash E-P all access. The E-P stands for Empowered Petpreneur because that is what you are, girl. Well, now you've kind of piqued my interest. So can you give us an example of one of these ways that someone could market their business that's not like sleazy yeah. feeling and gross? Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> we are really, really big um, proponents of content or community marketing. So here's the thing. Like I've never met a dog trainer who if you ask them, you know, why do you do this? Like the answers are really pretty similar. It's all about wanting to improve dogs' lives, right? We want to keep them in their forever homes. We want their people to treat them well. We want them to be happy and content. And we, you know, we want to increase and improve the relationship and bond between people and their dogs. Like dog trainers tend to agree on this sort of stuff. And so a big part of what the kind of marketing that we teach is all about using what you know about dogs to improve dogs' lives. 
so things like um, you know everything from if you have some writing skill, um, writing blogs, writing um, content. I mean, you know, newsletters. Um, one of one of my favorite um, one of our favorite projects are things like uh, tip sheets, where you know people they create flyers and brochures, all these passive content pieces that are kind of boring, and it just feels like marketing, and nobody wants to read them. But what if instead every quarter you put out three new tip sheets in all the places you would have put brochures and flyers and things like that, and so people are picking up. Maybe you're really passionate about early puppy socialization, and people are picking up a handout about how important it is to get out and socialize their puppies. Um, maybe you teach basic manners classes, and so you're putting out awesome handouts on the, you know, the five rules of you know, creating a rocket recall. Um, you're, you're actually putting out content that's helping people <laughs> in the process of them learning about you. Because the big challenge for a dog trainer in marketing is people only need you when they need you. It's not, you know, if, if, if if we're marketing some product, we can try, we can use our marketing to convince somebody that they want or need it, even if they don't actually need it. But dog training, you really only need dog training when you need it. And so that means that we have to be in, you know, dog trainers have to be in front of their clients, their potential clients, until those people have a need. So if I'm, you know, picking up tip sheets, you know, every quarter you put three new topics out and every time I go to the vet or the pet supply store, I'm like, ooh, loosely schwalking, I want that one too. Six months from now or two years from now when I need a dog trainer, I know who to go to because I'm already loyal to your brand. I've been reading your stuff. It's all over my house. I've kept it. I'm going to throw the brochure out and the business card's going to end up in the couch cushions. But the tip sheets, I don't throw them out because I want to be able to refer back to them. Yeah. And so, so it's things like that. And, you know, you can do that with, all, there's lots of different ways to do that, you know, speaking as well. And I mean, there's just, there's tons of different ways to get great content out there. But, but that's the concept is just use what you're passionate about, which is educating people about dogs so that they know that you're there when they need you. That is such a great idea. I'm going to go do that <laughs> myself Yay. in my own business because you're right. You know, I was, I was somewhere recently, um, I was handing out flyers for a dog mom's day event that I was planning and I was at a pet supply store and they said, do, Oh, do you want to leave some business cards over? We have a stack of business cards. And I went over in the corner and there was like, all these just business cards oh, yeah. um, for, for trainers, pet photographers, all sorts of different services. I didn't take any of them because like what kind of value was I going to get out of that? You know, yeah, exactly. card. maybe I could look them up online or follow them on social media or something, but it wasn't like appealing to pick up. So I just love your idea. How cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fun. And we've, we, and, and that's, I think you make a really good point too. I mean, not only is it not appealing or engaging, but there's so much of that out there that it all just kind of gets lost anyway. You know, we, one of another project that I really love, um, this can work well for dog trainers. If you, for, for trainers who, um, who do a lot of repetitive work, like, you know, if you're specializing in sports classes, for example, where, where people you know, stay with you for a long time. But it's also a project I really love. We do a lot of work with um, dog walkers. We, we actually have a professional certification program for dog walkers. And this is, I think it's great for dog walking and daycare and things like that. But, you know, you think about, yeah, all those business cards, those shiny business cards, but who wants them? What if instead of business cards, you were putting out a series of trading cards? So we've done this with some of our clients. It's so fun where you create uh, customized, you know, like, like uh, baseball cards, customized trading cards for the dogs that you serve and put those out instead. It's so fun. And of course, you know, it's a great thing to do for the clients and the clients are like giving them to everybody they know because, you know card with They're their own dog hard. like who would, you know, yeah so it just it, it, so a lot of this is just about being creative thinking outside the box and saying how what what can I do that's really different from anything anyone else is doing more effective and probably a lot less uncomfortable and it feels valuable too you know you're, you're serving while you're while you're building your business right yeah I, wonderful ideas um so we, we only have a little, little time left, but we have time for a couple more questions. So um, I, I think I can guess the answer to this question, but I have to <laughs> ask it. Um, so, so anyone who's listening who maybe really wants to start a dog training or, or dog walking or something kind of business, or maybe they already have started it, 
they're kind of struggling. What do you see as like a common mistake that prevents people from being really successful in this kind of a business? And I'm guessing it's just like not not showing up or not getting the word out. Um, but maybe you have a different answer you're going to surprise me with. <laughs> no, it, it's part, yeah, no, you're right. A huge part of it is not doing the marketing. Uh, another huge part of it is undervaluing yourself. Um, mm -hmm. If your rates are too low, not only will you not make enough when you are full, you're much, much less likely to be hired. Um, people take their dogs seriously. We equate cost with value. If your rates are low, I'm going to assume you're not as good as the dog trainer who has the high rates. People think that they'll get more business if they have lower rates, but it's absolutely the opposite. So you really got to got to take a look at that. Um, yeah, and and then you know again, just not not um, not putting in the time to work on the business. Most dog trainers I know they keep themselves plenty busy, and I'm talking about dog trainers who you know who really aren't making what they need to make, who don't feel successful yet. They're busy, but they're busy in the business, right? They're seeing clients, and they're you know doing write-ups for clients, and they're prepping for clients, and they're getting ready for their classes, and they're they're doing all of that, but they're not putting the same amount of effort on the business and making sure that they're actually offering the right services and that those services are structured properly. It's another huge mistake we make. And there are a lot of different ways to provide private training and there's a lot of different types and ways to provide classes. And those upfront decisions make a huge difference too. And so just working, you know, making those choices in a really deliberate, informed, educated way, your rates, your, your marketing, and and I think the other big thing is time management <laughs> right, for all of us, right? I mean, no matter what you're doing, but if, you, if you're not creating the time that is necessary to work on the business, um, the business will not grow. Yeah. I think it's so tempting to, you know, research things online and watch a million YouTube videos. And then before you know it, like four hours have gone by and you could have spent that time doing like 10 different things to further your business, you know, updating a blog post, emailing potential people, um, running out to hand out some, some of your info sheets that you're handing out or, or what have you. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really important to be kind of be conscious of like, what you're spending your time on. It's true. And I think, I think also, you know, in addition to all those things, I think that people, um, dog pros tend, one of the things that I think trainers and walkers and just dog pros in general spend too much time doing is spending a lot of time online looking at what other people are doing. And you should be informed about what competitors and colleagues are up to. The problem is we we're too much of a lemming industry. This was an industry that was started by people who did not have uh, a good business background. And so we have spent just decades copying bad practices. And so it's really dangerous to go and look at what other dog trainers and dog walkers and things like that are doing in your area and then emulate those because most likely you are repeating mistakes that, and it's getting better out there, but, um, but just to recognize that you're probably better thinking outside the box or going and getting, uh, you know, getting some professional business education because if you are trying to build a business based on what other people are doing, most likely a lot of the common mistakes are getting baked into your business. Mm -hmm. And I, well, something that I've kind of noticed is you never know how successful someone is. Like you could, you can't tell from the outside. <laughs> yeah. You could stalk them online and think, wow, this person's doing so well. Yeah. And they might not. And vice versa too. Sometimes I look at people, I'm like, oh, they only have like 200 Instagram followers, but in actuality, they're very successful and they're doing very well for themselves. So you really can't compare yourself to other people. No, it's true. And, and you know, if you take a fraction of that energy and just invest it in learning how to do what you do really well, you're going to get way farther ahead and a lot faster. Yes, absolutely. Um, so Veronica, tell us, do you have a couple of apps or tools or resources that you use to make everything run smoothly because you got a lot going on. You're very busy. So <laughs> what, what makes it all work? <laughs> yeah. So um, first I'll say, so one of the things that we all live by is a practice that we teach our clients to, which is that we all use uh, what we call a master schedule. So we have sort of a, a structured schedule. So 
you know, everything ha kind of has its place, right? And um, so Mondays are used in certain ways and Tuesday afternoons are used in certain ways and Wednesdays are set aside for, you know, writing or whatever it is. And so when I sit down every day, I already know what I'm doing and I've blocked out the time to do it. And so, you know, if somebody says to me, the client says, oh, you know, could you write this rate increase letter, rate increase letter um, for me? Or if I... Um, you know, I write a number of, you know, journal, I, you know, I, I, I write several dozen, a minimum of several dozen articles a year for all the different journals and newsletters and things wow. that we do. All of that's scheduled out ahead of time. Like I write on a certain day and I know exactly what article I'm writing on which, you know, on, on which, you know, writing block and all of that is just, so nothing falls through the crack. Nothing is last, last minute. Nothing surprises me. I just, everything has its place and so that that's a structure that we teach um, in terms of like the technology for it you can do whatever you want um, some people in our company use Google Calendar for that some people use fancy apps I am an old-fashioned analog girl I love paper and pencil <laughs> I, I love I, so I, I my ma whole master schedule is in an old-fashioned Actually, I'll tell you, the one that I use, it's awesome. It's called the planner pad, and I just, I love the way it's, it's organized. Um, we also do use a lot of technology, though, because um, none of us work in the same office. We work all across the country and actually um, a couple people in other countries as well. And so we use various different um, online apps to keep uh, projects managed. Um, one of the ones we love is called Monday. And it's a it's a uh, project management and task to do um, uh, organizer and we've we've been using that for about two years uh, and we really really love it um, it just helps us keep track of who's supposed to be doing what and when it's supposed to be done and when it's been done and and uh, it allows us to organize projects and ongoing things we love that one um, and uh, and we also use software called Infusionsoft which is just sort of our kind of everyday um, client management software and um, uh, manages a lot of our marketing automation and that sort of thing too. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Is there an app that you recommend to people who are um, trainers or dog walkers to schedule their time and communicate with their clients, like from a B to C perspective? Yeah. Um, for dog trainers, I would take a look at um, a company called Dog Biz Pro. They're not related to us. Um, oh despite the <laughs> similarity in name, um, but they've, they've got um, client management software for dog trainers. Um, and one of the things that's nice, so they, you know, it's some, you can keep track of all of your consult notes and, and things like that with your private training clients. Um, it also uh, dovetails into your website so that you can do um, all of your class registrations online and it, it'll, you know, keep track of class rosters and things like that. Um, for dog walkers, there are so many choices out there. I mean, just so, so, so many. And they all have a wonderful suite of features. It's that sort of thing where you kind of have to go check them out to see which one really fits best for you. A few you might take a look at. Scout is a great one. Um, Pets at Click is very um, commonly um, used. Uh, a lot of our clients like um, and our Dog Walking Academy graduates use one called Better, uh, Better Walker. Those are a few off the top of my list or top of my head. But um, I feel like there's, there's, there are new options coming out for dog walkers. It feels like almost every month. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. For trainers, it's a little bit more limited. Mm -hmm. More specialized. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go look all of those up and actually add them. <laughs> I have a, a master Google spreadsheet of all the resources all my podcast guests have recommended. Oh, wonderful. So Fantastic. I'll add all of those to that. And then anyone who's listening um, in, in the show notes here or somewhere on wherewagrepeat.com, you can find how to get access to that. <laughs> oh, very cool. That's yeah. wonderful. Um, so Veronica, um, tell everyone where they can learn more about dog biz and learn more about you online. Okay. Uh, we are at dogbizsuccess.com. Awesome. So yeah, check you, that out. And you can learn about all of our services there and all of the dog biz university courses, um, that we offer. And, um, that, that, that would be the, that would be the way to find out. And also we have an extensive, extensive, um, uh, blog archive of uh, you know just free articles about running your dog training business. Um, so that's a great resource too. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It has been such a pleasure, Tori. Thank you for producing this really wonderful podcast. Ah, thank you. 
Thank you for listening to the Wear Wag Repeat podcast. You can fetch show notes at wearwagrepeat.com. If you like what you hear, please hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And until next time, we'll see you around the dog park.